Hello everyone. Well, it's Sensortronic time again. Yes, I've managed to get my hands on another Hoover Sensortronic. Very happy to get this. We'll see how happy I am at the end of the video. So, I have System 1 and System 2 from the first generation Hoover Sensortronic range, launched in 1982. Well, inside this box is System 3. Now, System 3 is the first Sensortronic with a remote control. Right, let's have a look though, because the higher up you go in a Sensortronic range, the less reliable they tend to be when you add the power hoses and remote controls. They tend to uh, have a lot wrong with them. Now this one is a pretty early example of a System 3. Hopefully it's been well packed. Not that well. Right. Some bags here. Well, that's a sealed pack of Unifit bags, but no, I don't like, I don't like Unifit. Well, I don't like non-genuine bags. Unless they're an improvement on the original, i.e. fleece. Here we have a nice sealed pack of the original first-gen Sensortronic bags there. And also, looks like an even older but opened pack. Never seen that packaging before, I don't think. Slightly different packaging, but genuine Hoover. The large seven liter twin-skinned reusable bag. I think the Sensortronics may have been the first time Hoover used a double layered bag. So you've got the regular outer paper bag. It's pretty standard, but then Hoover added this inner layer here, which helps to retain finer dust. So there's that. Two ones, they are discolored, unfortunately. You can see they are supposed to be cream and they are plastic, yes. This is the correct colour. You can see they've got a slightly darker colour. But surprisingly, that is intact, that one. It's not cracked like most of them seem to be with the lock ring system. And even the other one, amazingly, is not cracked. I'll check on the hose in a minute. The hose, hmm. Now this is odd because when I first saw this in the listing, I thought it had discolored, but I think this is a replacement somehow. So it doesn't look quite right, does it? That's very odd. I'm pretty sure that that is not original. The contour head itself is original it's the head that this machine would have had and in this color scheme in the first generation first wave that's a little bit mucky and a bit rusty but it's light rust that should mostly come off with a bit of a brillo pad and some metal polish so it's just a bit funny that that doesn't actually match mm. might look into spray painting that just so it matches but well it's a little detail. We'll take the cleaner out. I've noticed some damage, but I did see it. I did see the damage in the listing. Right, that's everything. Let's have a look at this hose. Now this hose has also, I think, had a repair. Because as you can see here, it doesn't quite match. But despite that, it's in pretty good condition. This is the remote control as featured in the first generation Sensortronic TV commercial. This one seems in 
pretty good shape again the locking ring is all intact here's the on off switch and we have a rotary dial you can adjust the power from one up to five we also on this model have a power takeoff socket for the optional in this case electrokinetic power driven head and i'm sure i've got a couple of those somewhere now if this had the power head it would be the total system five so basically system three is exactly the same as total system five apart from the color and the lack of power head now my very first brand new vacuum cleaner that i well, my dad helped me buy back in the day, got it on what they used to call HP higher purchase from the local electricity board. I paid for it out of my allowance and pocket money and my dad signed the uh, higher purchase form. So basically he got it out on HP and I paid him back. And of course there was interest to pay. Now the one I got was again an early model, but it's not quite as early as this because what Hoover did this has cream color tools. They later changed the tools to, well, it depended on the model, but system one had a sort of a dark blue color tool and most of them had black tools. My total system five had brown tools and a brown tool caddy. It also had a hose just like this, but it was brown. This hose didn't last because this is um, a hose. It's got a lot of, it's got a sort of a skin on it. And my one started to split around here pretty soon after I got it and Hoover replaced it. I think they replaced it with another of the same, but then very soon after Hoover changed this type of hose into the sort of silver color, which they continued using throughout the range, um, throughout the different generations of Sensortronics. So this isn't bad, but I think because it's got a different color end here, I think this has been replaced during the guarantee. Now, it is starting just there. It, the skin is starting to split, but this, it's dirty, yes, but it will clean up very well. And they're very heavy, these hoses as well. The, the later silver color ones or the bronzy color, much lighter. Um, but this is the best condition hose. So hopefully it'll all be working. And you can see it connects up to the machine here. It's got a three pin plug. So this will, this is a power hose. So again, it powers the remote control, but it also powers the power takeoff socket. So I can have the, the power, the power head. So that is in very, very good condition. Okay, let's have a look at this. Oh dear, that's in worse. Look at that. But that, a lot of this will come clean, I'm pretty sure. That will come off. That's just paint marks. Let's have a closer look anyway at this lovely chocolate brown Hoover Sensortronic System 3. I've just given this cleaner a quick wipe down. Haven't done very much to it, but I think with a little bit of care and attention, it's going to come up fairly well. Now, it has suffered some damage in transit. Not the wheels this time, as on my System 2, if you've see, seen that video, one of the wheels was broken. But on this one, both wheels seem to be intact. It has suffered not, cat not a catastrophic breakage, but a breakage nonetheless. I've put the piece back actually. <laughs> In fact, you probably can't really see, but it's here. You might see, well, I oh, there we go, look, there. You see that? Now obviously, lower parts of this machine pretty much obsolete and will have been obsolete for years. But it's one single piece. This reminds me a bit of chocolate from an Easter egg, that. Fortunately, using some special glue and some reinforcing tape on the back of this I will be able to more or less invisibly mend. I'm going to leave that off actually because I will be refurbishing this 
This whole lower casing comes away pretty easily, so I'll be taking it apart for cleaning anyway, uh, cleaning and polishing, getting all these paint marks off, and then I'll, I'll make the repair. So it's not catastrophic, it could have been far worse. So if this machine works, all in all, I'm pretty pleased with it. Right, so here it is. I just love this colour scheme, absolutely beautiful 80s colour, cream and brown was very popular colour for vacuum cleaner in the 80s. We had five lovely colours for this, as you see my system one is a, a vibrant red, system two is sort of an avocado green which was popular amongst uh, bathroom, <laughs> bathroom suites. That was a very popular colour from the 70s onwards, an avocado green uh, bathroom suite. And then of course this in the lovely milk chocolate brown and then we had the cream and brown system four and then the dark chocolate brown total system five beautiful 80s vacuum cleaners and and pretty solid so it's for it follows the same form of course as the other ones we've got the built-in tools in this machine under this cover which Again, and I did notice this on the listing, it is, it has snapped here, well it's cracked. Again, I can reinforce that on this side. It's always going to look like it's got a little line here. I'm not too concerned. It's not gonna affect, even if I don't fix it, it won't affect the performance of the vacuum. It, it isn't a suction seal. Let's have a look. There's normally a date wheel on the back of these. Mm, possibly not it's probably on the back of the tool tray and as you can see the tool caddy or tray is cream and being oops being the first generation model we don't have the air freshener we do have a date wheel that's pretty clean isn't it so it's pointing to da, 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 83 i think that says 83 or is it 82 no i think it's a three it's very hard to see at the moment it looks like it's april 1983 this part was made the cleaners were launched in 1982 along with the hoover compacts because i do have the original sensor strike brochure and it does say 1982 on the back but we have very very good condition crevice tool and again very good condition just a little bit dirty dusting brush now we are missing oh dear tragedy we're missing the all-purpose nozzle but as luck would have it somewhere I know I've definitely got one because I've seen it recently I have a new matching all-purpose nozzle the the correct one the correct shape for the Sensortronics the French made um, all-purpose nozzle in this color so I will be able to complete this I'm so chuffed when I saw that was missing I thought it's fate I must get that vacuum because I've got the nozzle to go there so here's a bag they've put a new bag in but it's missing unfortunately the bag slide I can get a generic bag slide to fit if I can't get the original it's not too bad is it it's not too dirty at all got the secondary filter and again i've seen far worse than that that will clean up quite well i do have some spares so yes it looks it looks fine and dandy just have to fold that over so that's just you know I'm not too concerned that that's missing it's not uh, it's not a tragedy I'll just fold that pop it in lock that into place and pop the tool caddy back and then the tool caddy cover right let's have a look at the control panel so on system three there are no visible controls apart from the foot operated pedal here so you've got one side for the auto cord rewind and one side 
to turn the cleaner on and off. I say turn the cleaner on and off, it turns the mains on to the cleaner because obviously we turn the cleaner on and off via the remote control. So no controls, we've just got three performance indicator lights. So we have an amber mains on light which will illuminate when the machine's plugged in and live at the wall socket but switched off at the remote handle. That will indicate amber. I'm not sure if that stays on all the time. Hopefully I'll soon find out. And then we've got the performance indicators. The green light illuminates all the time when the machine's running, providing there is airflow. If there's a blockage or the bags full, that will go off and we'll have this light, which should be red, but it looks quite amber. So I'm not sure what color that will be when I switch it on. So quite simple design there. And at the back here, We've got the exhaust grill, which has a perished um, diffuser. They always, always perish on these. So I'll be replacing that again with something generic. You can't get the originals. And even if you could find stocks of the originals, they would have perished as well in the packaging. I bought some, um, some similar diffusers from an Electrolux cleaner and I just opened the packet and it just crumbled. It was in a sealed pack. Certain uh, filter, filter media does perish quite easily. So we also have a cream colored cable to show that this is a very early example. It would have been changed to normally a dark brown. In this case, some machines would have had black. And the cable rewind, as I'm pulling it out, does sound pretty good. And it's quite a short cable, but the cable as well is not damaged. Okay, well, I'm gonna plug it in now. It shouldn't turn on without the hose. Hang on a minute though, just before I do, I better check the plug. Now this isn't too bad at all, it's not perfect, but it'll do for the purpose of switching this machine on for the video. The cord clamp is on the outer insulation, which is correct, but it isn't quite screwed down one side. And also the neutral wire, that looks fine, but the live wire is showing a little bit of bare wire there, but it's not too bad. I'm, I'm gonna risk it for the purpose of just switching it on for this video. We've got a genuine, well, an authentic plug. Obviously, this is of an era when plugs weren't fitted to appliances back in the day. Certainly in the UK, they weren't fitted. You had to buy your own plug and fit it yourself. I can't see, oh, it's a Detta, if you're interested, a Detta brand plug. It's in pretty good shape as well. So, Let's plug this System 3 in and hope it works. As I said, without the hose connected, when I plug it in, nothing should happen. It shouldn't turn on. All that should happen is one of these lights should illuminate. Right. Fingers crossed, folks. Aha! Two of the lights have illuminated. Obviously, I've got my studio lights on at the moment, so you can see what I'm doing. So these lights don't appear very bright, but I can confirm that the amber light has illuminated. But also, what I think should have been red, it looks quite amber as well, slightly darker amber. That's illuminated as well. And you might be able to see a bit better. If I turn them off, you can just about see, I think how they change. Okay, well that seems fine. Now we need to connect the hose. Just to be safe, I've switched the machine off at the wall socket before I connect up the power hose. So on the machine itself, we've got the power takeoff socket, three pin power takeoff socket or three holes to incorporate the three pins on the end of the hose here. We've also got a release button should you need to remove the hose, you just press that down. So we'll just push it in until it clicks into position. Jiggle it about a bit, that's in firmly. Okay, 
Here's the moment of truth. We're going to switch the machine on, but I think what I'll do, I know it looks good, but you never know with used uh, appliances. I'm going to put it on setting one and I'm going to turn the switch to the on position. So now when I switch it on at the wall, the machine, fingers crossed, should turn on. Okay, so we come to the worst part of the video for me, certainly the worst part when I'm unboxing a used vacuum. I'm not concerned about turning on a brand new factory sealed machine, but a used one, that's another matter. The listing stated it worked, but how well it works, we'll have to find out. Okay, here goes. Fingers crossed. Okay, now it's a little bit, a bit rough on the wind down. And of course that was just on the lowest power setting on the remote control, but I think that sounds pretty good. Okay, I feel, I feel confident enough now to adjust the remote setting and we'll uh, see how this machine sounds when it's on the full setting five, which is the 1000 watts. Okay, so we've now got the scenario of the machine being on, the mains is running to the cleaner, both lights are illuminated, but it's off at the remote handle. So we'll, again, we'll start off on setting one. With any luck, the machine should start working when I press the switch. Well, considering this cleaner is 35 plus years old, I'm very pleased with it. Yes, it's got a couple of issues. One happened in transit, but that's a risky take. Fortunately, it is a brake that can be fixed without uh, it showing too much. But all in all, especially for a Sensortronic with this type of hose to be fully working, Saying that, I'm detecting a little bit of a smell. Now, I don't know if it's my lights or it could be that nasty little suppressor inside there, which could be about to blow, right? This has happened before with my System 1. It seemed fine. And then when I changed the shot, you know, I moved the camera about and switched it on again. That's when it <laughs> went kaput. I can fit new suppressors or bypass them. I do have some new suppressors, which I prefer to do with this sort of machine, just put a new suppressor in. So let's pop on the, uh... oh, another thing they did very early on from system three, system three, four and five, they did replace the plastic tubes. They kept the plastic tubes on system one and two, but they replaced them with the metal tube because I know my total system five, although it had this type of hose, this with the skins, um, but that all in dark brown, it did have metal ones, which, you know, they should all have had really, but certainly the, the more upper you went up in the range, you got the metal ones. So these aren't very good. Um, as again, I'm surprised these have survived. And again, I think, amazingly, that must be a replacement. It's very bizarre. So obviously this has had some repairs done to it. And I think they've been done by an authorised dealer or a Hoover service engineer. Somebody from Hoover might have done it because they, they seem to have been, the repairs have been done properly. Okay, I'm going to switch on again, but uh, let's hope that it continues to work. <laughs>
I'm still a little bit nervous about using this machine and very nervous about being quite so close to it with it plugged in until I get this opened up and uh, stripped down and cleaned I'm going to be dubious about it I'm not going to use it for much longer often you can um, look at the suppressor on a vacuum and you can see if they're about to blow sometimes they give signs that the casing around the suppressor which just looks like a metal normally a metal little tube a cylindrical tube in the older machines like this they, they're fairly large the later sensitronics did have a suppressor but uh, they were normally sort of a yellow color and thinner they're a bit harder to bypass so i am of course ooh, Still a bit nervous of this machine. We'll uh, give it the old suction gauge test. Now again because of the design of these locking rings, well if I close the locking ring actually it might help close the gap. There's going to be a bit of suction loss. Now Hoover claimed that these machines had a 250 air watt motor, so they were a thousand watts apart from system one and they were supposed to deliver 250 air watts and that was the first time in a brochure I actually saw air wattage shown in the specifications so for a thousand watts you got 250 air watts which is quite efficient considering a lot of machines that came after this that were far higher wattage over double the wattage especially if they were bagless could have much less suction so this is not going to be completely accurate because again it's going to lose some suction but it'll just be interesting to see i'm going to switch it on i don't this won't have soft start i'm going to switch it on on setting five so hopefully it's going to be okay no i'm gonna i'm gonna chicken i'm gonna start it on one that's what i always did with my vacuums always start start them off on a lower power if they had electronic controls okay we'll start off on one and ramp up to setting five so that went up to a very respectable 80 on the gauge i don't think it would improve any more after refurbishment a clean filter and possibly a slightly better seal we might get a couple more notches above 80 but 80 well for a machine from 1983 that's a lot of suction power can you imagine combining this with a electrically driven power driven head it would be absolutely fantastic although when i had my machines when i had them from new I never needed to go above two really on the dial or when I got the later versions uh, that had all the extra lights it was up to about four of the indicator lights it was about the setting you'd use for upholstery I found that anything higher it was just too much the the nozzle became hard to push so I'm really chuffed with this absolutely I was nervous about opening it because often things do end up being broken in transit but on the whole I think this is going to look pretty stunning when I've finished with it finally we'll just check the uh, automatic cord rewind let's switch it off here again I've always found them sluggish on these cleaners that will have a go Well, to be honest, that is not, <laughs> that's not bad. As I said, they weren't fantastic when they were brand new. And I'm old enough to know these machines from brand new. They always get, they always get tangled up. Yeah, that's pretty good, isn't it? So, oh, so I'm looking at it through my viewfinder. <laughs> can't believe I've got one of these every time I manage to get hold of a sensortronic I think oh can't but I can't believe it and to get one in such good condition with a motor that sounds pretty good because obviously parts for these you're pretty much 
was going to say a rude word. You're pretty much scuppered when it comes to buying parts for this. You can buy bags, you can buy filters fairly easily. That's about it. If you want a power hose, even if it's, you know, the later version, again, you're scuppered. And when you can find them, if you can find them, they are very, very expensive. You know, knocking on for 200 pounds, I saw one for, but uh, it turned out not to be available anyway when I tried to order it. So there you go. <sighs> ah, a lovely Hoover Sensortronic System 3. You will see this again, looking, I wouldn't say a lot better because I think you'll agree, this machine's in pretty good shape anyway but it will certainly be cleaner and more polished. The missing uh, all-purpose nozzle will, will be replaced. She's gonna have a bit of a spa and a bit of a clean and a bit of love, but all in all, oh, it's a fantastic, iconic for me, 80s vacuum cleaner from Hoover. Who better? Okay, that's the end of this video. Hopefully you'll have more Sensortronic videos to come. It's very unlikely, but I would love a System 4, a total System 4 and a total System 5. I would love to complete my series of 1 to 5, but I'm not bothered. If I've got System 1 to 3, I'm more than happy with that. Because the only difference between System 4 and System 2 is basically the machines are identical. System 4 has the power hose and power head. And Total System 5, again, is identical to this, apart from it has the electrokinetic power head and it's in a darker brown, but it's the same, basically. So I'm not, it would be nice to have the complete range again, but no, I'm more than happy with the three I've got so far. And of course, I've got some from the later ranges as well. Do you love the Sensortronics? Have you got some? Let me know in the comments section below. And whoops, careful. And I'll see you all very soon for the next video. Bye for now.